Good afternoon. You don't have to answer this yet. Good afternoon, Karthik. Uh, not today, but on Thursday we are. No, yeah, Thursday. And then after Thursday, from then on, we'll be using watercolor like every day. I think I slept funny. My neck's not going all the way over. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, of course, Jasmine. I miss Vince Bale. Hi, Sarah. How are you? I'm good, doing fine, just eating strawberries. How about you? 
I'm tired. My boyfriend bought a truck last night. So we were at the dealership till like nine o'clock. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, it takes like a good four hours to buy a car. Oh my God. Just for a car? But it's done. Well, there's a lot of paperwork to sign and making sure you have insurance and all that. Wow. And then they have to wash it, detail it, and put gas in it. Mm. So all of that takes so much time. It's crazy. It's cray cray. That's yes, cool. Arden. Arden, you can use your mic if you want. No. Okay. We are going to review our worksheets at the end of today. Um, I know some of you had questions, but we're going to do this activity first. My bestie is blowing up my phone. That's just what we're talking about today. You don't have to answer it. I mean, if you want to answer it, you can. Okay, let's take a look. I'm gonna take attendance and then we'll get going. Starting from the top, um, Mohammed. Yeah. Arden is here. Michael. Michael, are you here? Here. Thank you. Ray, are you here? He's been here. Where'd he go? Um, Noah. Noah, are you here? Here. Thank you. Median, he hasn't been here. William? No. Haley? Here. And Sienna? Here. Serena? Here. Um, Evelyn? Evelyn? There she is, she's coming in. Karthik? Here. Natalie? Here. Sarah's here, I know. Eli hasn't been here. Sophia? Here. Alex? No outs. Duke? Here. Dylan? Here. <laughs> Thank you. Natalia? No, Natalia. Jared? Jared Olvera? Here. Thank you. Jasmine? Here. Anthony? Here. Kaylee? Here. And hold on. Oh, come on. There we go. You guys can see it again, right? The what is art? Yes. OK. Um, Jasmine's here. Anthony? Kaylee, thank you. Here. Alize. Angel. Angel. 
Angelina? Here. Alexander, you're here. Um, Austin? Here. And Jordan? Here. All right. Perfect. All right. So we're going to do a little activity and then we are going to. Let's see. Miss Sidstow. What's that? Are we joining? Are we joining? Um, no, not today. Today's kind of an easy day. We're going to do a little activity. We're going to do a little lecture. I'm um, just kind of getting us ready for our next project. And then at the end of class today, we'll have plenty of time for review of those worksheets. Okay. All right. So today's kind of an easier day, um, but it will be, you know, interactive. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna watch a two minute, two and a half like minute video. Um, so let me get that going. Let me start from the beginning. Um, just let me know if you don't hear any sound. So um, once I start it. So quick video and then we'll get into our discussion. Art. When we hear that word, some of our minds jump to museums or framed paintings. And in that context, some people think, nah, I'm not a big fan of art. I just don't get it. Or they think of art as something that's just for intellectuals or artsy people. But really, art is for anyone who wants to experience it. And it's often in more places than we might realize. Songs you like, movies you watch, poems, theater, even a quilt that your grandmother made. All of that and more is art. So you might be wondering, well, then what is art? How do I define it? Well, that's tough. Art's been around for thousands of years, and through the ages, it's evolved in a number of different ways. And the reasons for creating it vary from person to person, depending on any number of factors. So defining art is pretty tricky, and it's something that's been debated throughout history. There just isn't one agreed upon definition. However, many believe that art is anything that stirs emotion in you. Now, the emotions that get stirred up depend entirely on your own history, your story, everything that comes together to make up who you are. And because of this, three different people can experience the same piece of art and have wildly different reactions to it. One person might think it's the most beautiful thing they've ever seen, the second person might hate it, and the third might not feel much of anything at all. And none of them would be wrong. Everyone's entitled to their own preferences and feelings when it comes to art. You know, the way you feel about your favorite song could be the same way that someone else feels about their favorite sculpture. And even though you might not like that sculpture, it can be valuable to consider why that person enjoys it so much. You may learn something about them and maybe even yourself. The term art is really just a label. Over the years, a lot of people have tried to classify what it is or what it isn't, but that's not really what art is about. It's about your personal experience with it and the meaning that you draw from it. Everyone reacts to art differently and has the potential to grow and learn from it. It gives us the opportunity to tell stories, record history, and tap into our emotions in a way that few other things can. Goodwill Community Foundation, creating opportunities for a better life. All right, see, quick, painless video, right? All right. Mr. Edsel. Yes. Well, to be honest, that's a good video. It's really, it's really just simple and kind of answers some questions because I've been kind of yeah. poking and prodding at you guys. Um, of course, Alexander's being dramatic. <laughs> um, so let's take a look at my little um, my little lecture um, PowerPoint. So let's see. All right, so. We talked about what was art, or we watched that video, and now we're going to go into looking at things um, in other subjects that might possibly um, 
evoke some feelings in you, which means it would make it technically art. Um, is this still working? Yes. So authors, so J.R.R. Tolkien, he wrote The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. Uh, he is a prodigious storyteller, but also a fine illustrator as well. In some versions of his books, he's actually drew paintings um, or drew drawings and did paintings just like um, the one right here. Um, Court. Kurt Vollengut, um, he wrote Slaughterhouse Five and Breakfast of Champions. These are really famous books. Um, for these books, he did a lot of cool, weird doodles. Um, and now these doodles have actually become really popular tattoos that a lot of people get. So it just shows you that you can be all three things really. Um, you can become pop art because you did drawings and books and you actually wrote your own book. If you're really into science, there's a couple um, scientists who are also, you know, really great artists. Uh, Leonardo did uh, self studies of diverse scientific fields. He did these intricate, you know, workings of how nerves go through muscles and the skeletons and what it looks like with a baby inside of a womb. Um, John James, um, how do you even say that, Audubon? <clears throat> he did, um, he studied birds. And he actually did drawings of birds to help him with his studies. So that just shows you how art is in every aspect of life. Also, if you're into sports, uh, Leroy Neiman, George Bellows, and Henry Rochure. I'm not even sure if I'm saying it right, but did football players, um, you know, boxing, baseball. So, you know, Art really does invade every aspect, even sports. Um, fashion designers have become artists. So um, Helmut Lang actually does uh, visual art now instead of making clothing, as well as Takata. Um, upon his retirement, he swapped pattern cutting for painting and declared art and fashion are not really that different. It's certainly clear to see how Kenzo could claim such a thing. Um, these vibrantly patterned self-portraits featured in his debut exhibition bear a stark resemblance to the aesthetic of the clothes by his namesake. So what he's saying is he started painting um, people or himself in the clothes and pattern of clothing that he used to make. Same thing with Giorgio Armani. If you guys know the Armani clothing line, he actually created a building where he has um, installations permanently up of his clothing. So it kind of looks like a shopping store, but really it's like a history of fashion done in a really artsy way. So it just shows you, you know, anything can be art in a way. Um, or in any subject that can be art. Same thing with mathematics. Um, Maurit Cornelius Etcher was a Dutch graphic artist who made mathematically inspired woodcuts, lithographs, and mezzotints. Despite wide popular interest, Etcher, Etcher um, was for long somewhat neglected in the art world. They said, no, it's math. It can't be art. It can't even be both. So. It wasn't until he was 70 years old that he was um, recognized as an actual artist. Another one. This is, um, this is yes. I never know that art could be anything. Well, in a way, yeah. Because you, you saw that definition, right? There's not really a clear definition. It's kind of tough. Um, but this just shows you, you know, maybe places you didn't think that art could be hiding. So this artist would um, known for using mathematical formulas to create drawings of real life objects, intricate illustrations, animations, fractals, um, use mathematics as the main tool to create artworks. Therefore, his artworks can be totally described by mathematical concepts. So looking at this artwork, there's probably a formula for making this. That's what it's saying. And same thing for here. And I think that was it. Um, I do have this Google slide available for you and I have some extra links if you just want to go um, above and beyond and take a look at those. Um, 
after this, we're going to go to Google Classroom, as always. And I have a little activity for you guys. Um, did I put it in here? So let me add it. I think I only did it for third period. So it's just going to be under materials. And I'm going to put. I hope this is going to be fun. It's fun and it's easy. I'm excited for it at least. It's on Jamboard. Have you guys used Jamboard? Um, well. Yeah. Oh, why is it doing this? Wait, Miss Didsdo. Yeah. Yes. You know what we haven't used in a while? Since what? we've created, we, we've, you've created one for us. What? Uh, Pixton. Oh, the Pixton thing? Yeah. Are we using it or no? It's just I'm more not of fun. Today. Oh. Oh my gosh. Why is it doing this? Uh, I don't know why it's only drawing. Okay, hold on, guys. How do I get rid of this? This is so annoying. Okay. Let me try and close something. There we go. Okay, I fixed it. Okay. I'm trying to record this for students that are absent. So I was trying. And then the program was just glitching all over. Okay. So go to Google Classroom and then I'm going to put up some materials for you guys to click on. And it's going to be on Jamboard. doing it again. Why it keeps doing that, I don't know. This is a pain. won't close. No. 
Okay. Sorry, guys. This is all kinds of messed up. All right, let me just try and add this to Jamboard without recording. I missed it, so. Yeah? You're gonna post on Google Classroom, right? Yeah. Okay. It just kept freezing every time I tried to add anything. So I'm gonna put What is why is it making it an assignment? Okay. Oh, here comes Ray. All right. So if you guys go to Jamboard on Google Classroom is going to be called what is art under color and click on this activity. Let me delete these ones, these old ones. That's what I forgot to do earlier. So don't do anything yet. This was last class. Do you want help clearing up the other ones? Uh, just focus on this one. I'll do that one. So while you guys are answering this one, I'll, I'll go clear the other one. So uh, both of these are images of beds. Which one is art? So you guys need to go in and answer it um, while I clear these ones. But yeah, Sarah, if you answer and do it quickly, you can help me delete the other ones on the other pages, if you know how. Just don't delete the background. Well, what should we do here? So you guys need to, oh, did I not show you how to do that? So you click the little sticky note on the side, and then you can type your name, and then you're going to put it in whatever spot. So. Click sticky note, type your name. So I'll put Ms. D. And then I go, and then I get to pick whatever one. So I'm just gonna leave mine over here. So which one do you think it is? We all know it's the first one. Are you sure? Yeah, because why would it be two? Dude, people do realism. It can be two. See, it, you don't know. You don't know the answer. I'm confused. How do you do? How do you do uh, sticky notes? So on the side, can you see my screen? Uh. Go to you, go to my screen. Okay, I'll go to your screen. Oh, am I not sharing? That would help. No, you're not sharing. <laughs> Wait, share, 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 please. Okay, there okay. we go. So we go to the sidebar where it says sticky note and you type your name. Okay, never mind. I got it. Okay, cool. I failed. <laughs> you 
you can overlap your names like, like it's okay so just pick which one you think it is Let's see how many people. I only have 18 and I have 25, 24 people in the class. So you guys need to log in. Alex Miranda, we're doing an activity on Google Classroom under what is art. It's not an assignment though. Thank you, Sarah. No problem. All right, which one do you think it is? Both of these images are, oh, both of these are images of beds. Which one are? Uh, number one. All right. Once you do that, you're going to go to the next one. Both of these are images of urinals. <laughs> which uh, one is considered art? The second one. Wait, Mr. Dell, for that one, it says which one is considered art. Does that mean that they're both drawings, but like? You just have to. Oh my God. I know it's tricky language, huh? I know you're an old silly, huh? Do I need to start calling people out who aren't logged in? Uh, Ray, are you logged in? Who else? Ms. Dinsdale. Yeah? You know how there's two, two pictures of uh, urinals, right? Yeah. Wait, what are those used for? You'll see, you'll see. No, what are those used for? Oh, they're they're like a toilet. Ah, uh, all right. It's what boys uh, stand up and pee in. It's a urinal. All right, let's go to the next one. Um, both of these are considered are both uh, both are graphs. But which one is art? Number two. So don't do the very last one. If some of you are jumping ahead, so don't do that one. Oh, Ms. Dinsdale. Yeah. Well, you said earlier, math and graphs. Yeah, so which one would be considered art? So if you're on your phone, it's gonna be hard to use Jamboard. Just FYI. So some of you are in the middle. Which side are you trying to go to? So Duke, you're just trying in the middle. You can overlap names, it's okay. We're just trying to see the total. All right, so number four. Um, Charles Darwin was an English naturalist, geologist, and biologist, best known for his contributions to the science of evolution. Part of his studies included drawing birds. Is this considered art? Of course, because it's drawing. <laughs>
All right, once you've voted, go back to my main screen so we can all go through this together. We're gonna skip the last one just for right now. So you're all done, right? So let's go back to number one and let's take a look. So both of these are considered, or both of these are images of beds. Which one is art, right? So this one, I don't remember the artist's name because it wasn't important for right now. Um, he did a collage and he titled it, you know, a, like bed. Like he described it as a collage of a bed. This is just a picture of a bed, but technically photography is art, right? But if it doesn't give you any emotion, you could consider it what? Not art. But someone else may go, that's a beautiful picture of a bed. That makes me cozy and comfy and I consider it art. So technically both are art, All right? One's just a little more traditional and one's photography. Next one. So both of these images, both of these are images of urinals. Which one is considered art? So this is like a CG image of a urinal. And this was an actual piece of art that was in a museum. So our mutt in like 1917 or something, I don't think it was actually that date, um, but he to, I guess, create some uproar in the art world, decided to sign a urinal and just put it into his, you know, his artwork. Well, when people were walking by, there was a huge debate on whether that could be considered art. So he is one of the famous artists who has contributed to the fact that um, the idea of what art is and isn't has changed and why there's so much debate. So you could look at it and be like, that's not art, and that's okay. You could look at this and be like, that's not art. So to you, neither of these could be art or both of them could be but this one was actually a work of art in a museum. So both are graphs, which one is art? So I would say this one's more intricate and pretty, so it gives me a little more emotion. This just reminds me of doing math homework, which also gives me an emotion. It may not be a positive one. Um, so they both can be centered art, right? It's just up to you. Maybe these swirly lines, you know, are, are your art. Um, so both could technically be art. All right, Charles Darwin. So remember we learned that back in the day, um, they didn't consider certain things art, especially when it had to do with math and formulas. So same thing with Charles Darwin. He wasn't considered an artist. It wasn't until later that people realized how you know well studied these birds were and how beautiful his artwork actually is and started being you know, kept in museums. So for our last one, um, what are we looking at? So looking at this image right here, you tell me what you're looking at. Oh, if you can put a sticky note and type your name and then you can put, um, you know, whatever you think it is. Just if I said, look at this image, what are you looking at? Ooh, look at all these different answers. Let's see, let's get some more answers. I think I only have like 13 of you, 14 of you. There's no wrong answers. All 
All right. Is that everybody? All right, so let's talk about this. So what are we looking at? Let's see your answers. Someone said art of shoes, a pair of shoes, painting of shoes, uh, another painting of shoes, painting of shoes on a brick path, art, a drawing of a pair of untied shoes, a painting of shoes on a stone floor, and painting of worn out shoe. So you're probably wondering why I'm asking this. So if someone called you up and they're like, what are you looking at? And you said shoes, most likely they would just think you're talking about a pair of Nike sitting on the floor. Like, why are you looking at shoes? And they'd be like, oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm looking at a painting of shoes. And they'd be like, oh, cool. You have a painting of shoes? You'd be like, well, no, I'm looking at a picture of a painting of shoes. And then this tells you how important it is to be descriptive in artwork. If you, if I said, oh, that's shoes, like, no, that's a painting of shoes, right? It's a picture of a painting of shoes. And then you need to get more descriptive. You know, if they're untied, they're, you know, look brown, they look like they're worn out, right? So that's the type of things that's really important to think about art. Even if it was like, you know, that graph, you're like, you know, I'm looking at a, what looks like something to do with math. It's a graph, you know, it's using multiple colors. It's just really important to be really descriptive. So if I, next time I show you a picture, you know, and it's a pair of shoes, I want you to be like, it's a picture of a painting of shoes, right? Be as descriptive as possible. All right, so that was a little bit of a trick question. Um, is there any questions about why we went over this and how it ties into what art is? Does anyone have any questions? I'm reading through your chats now, guys. <laughs> a bed is art. The urinal gives me a lot of emotion. <laughs> So the whole point of going over this is just to show you that, you know, everyone's going to have some different opinion and it's up to you. It's really a good idea to listen to what other people have to say, even if it's maybe like they said in the video, if, and if it's a sculpture that's silly and it's a urinal, take the time to listen to someone and see why it gives them emotion and why they consider it art instead of be like, nope, my opinion is the only opinion that matters, right? Don't, don't throw up, don't throw up the hand. But this is gonna go into um, when we start watercoloring on Thursday, okay? So now what you guys get to go do is I'm gonna create an assignment and it's gonna be called post assessment. And just like at the beginning of our color unit, we took an assessment, right? It was a pre-assessment. This is gonna be our post assessment. It's got to be worth 15 points. It's going to be due today by four. And under color, 15. Come on. Don't do this to me, computer. 15 points. Okay. So that's there for you called post-assessment. I know that's so many points. So 15 points, fill out that. It's the same questionnaire as we did before. Put your period, first name, in your own words, what is art, where can you find art, and what isn't art. All right. And then when you guys are, when a good amount of you are done, we're gonna go over that um, worksheet. If you are all done and you think you messed up anywhere on the color schemes design worksheet, let me know so we can go over it. Or if any part of the color wheel you're still um, confused about any of this. Some of you messed up on the split complementary.
So I'll be keeping an eye out on who has turned in that assignment. So once you fill out the Google form, make sure you mark that assignment as done. And that's how I'll know if you did it. Uh, Mrs. Doe, how much do we have to write for a post assessment? I didn't give any requirement. Oh, okay. I gave you a break this time. So actually guys, we'll go over this worksheet next class, I think. So soon, when you have turned in your post assignment, I'm going to let you go. How does that sound? Yep, that sounds good. Okay, because I think that'll make more sense with when we start color mixing to go over that. So Serena and Sophia, you guys are free to go once I see that post assessment turned in. I got to change the, it's not worth that much, you guys. I, I think I finished with this now. Can I leave or? Yeah, you're good to go. Oh, thank you. Have a good one. Yep, uh, let me see. As soon as you turn in your post assessment, you're free to go. But if you actually didn't do it and you're just saying you did it. Nope. No assignments due. You can just relax. Just want to make sure that I turn mine in. I don't know. <laughs> I ah. usually don't press the button sometimes. Yeah, you're good. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you. Have a good rest of your. Oh, Sarah, I have a quick question. Sure. So, ooh, I feel. I feel uncomfortable. Uh, I don't feel uncomfortable. I just don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. Um, how's the letter recommendation going? I sent it to you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, sent, I sent you an email and I attached it like that day, that same day. Oh, really? Oh, okay. I need to look through it again. Okay, I'm blind. And then if there's anything you want me to add to it, just let me know. And never worry about checking up on things like that because it's really important. Notes due tomorrow. Okay. Let me double check that I sent that. I did. Okay, let me just look through my email again. All right, thank you. Have a good rest of your day. Bye, honey. Bye.
Bye, Dylan. So Jasmine, Jordan, and Alex, just make sure you get that in, all right? But you guys are free to go. Okay. Thank you. Bye, guys. You too. Bye.